Today on this fine spring day on the J Ray channel, we're going to tiptoe through the tulips as we take you to Biltmore to tour the gardens and grounds to see all the beautiful sights. The Biltmore Estate is an 8,000 acre property located in Asheville, North Carolina, just south of downtown. It's covered in beautiful landscape, which you'll see today. So after you leave the admissions gate, we're going to take a lift onto Approach Road, which will take you to the house. Along Approach Road, you'll see many different elements of landscape design created by Frederick Law Olmsted. And of course, in the spring, you can see so many beautiful things starting to get green and lush. Along the three mile path to the house, you'll see many beautiful sights like water features and different types of plants, shrubs, and trees inspired by Frederick Law Olmsted. You might even see some neat wildlife too, like deer, bear, or turkey. It's mid-April and the azaleas are just coming into bloom. You might even spot a loyal son on the way. We're not stopping at the house today, but here's a quick glance as we drive by. Check out that beautiful blue sky. We have now entered the walled garden, which is in walking distance of the house. Frederick Law Olmsted, Biltmore's landscape architect, originally planned this area to be full of vegetables and fruits, but George Vanderbilt had a different vision. George Vanderbilt wanted this area to be for ornament and not utility meaning that he wanted something pretty to look at and not an area to grow food. I guess the man didn't want to eat flowers. With several long hours of hard work put in by the Biltmore landscapers, these flowers are changed several times a year depending on the season. After these tulips die back, they will be taken out and a new type of flower will replace them. Now unfortunately at the time that we filmed this, we were at the very end of the tulip season at Biltmore. So a lot of the flowers were starting to die back. It had been pelted with cold weather and rain and harsh conditions. So if you think they look beautiful now, you should have seen them a week ago. Biltmore plants an estimated 50 to 100,000 tulips each year. They plant up to six bulbs in each hole of different varieties of tulips so that there is continuous color throughout the entire tulip season. Biltmore has documentation that verifies the tulips have been planted in the walled garden since about 1922. The tulips were planted in homage to the Dutch heritage of the Vanderbilts and to the term Biltmore. We really wanted to tiptoe through these tulips, but we kind of like having our season passes a whole lot more. And the great part about the gardens is, you can take all the pictures and video you want. So while you're out of breath and a half mile away from your car, just walk on down below the walled garden to the conservatory, which was designed by Frederick Law Olmsted and completed in 1895. It holds 2,000 different plants, all native and exotic. The conservatory encompasses several different rooms, including the hot house, the cool house, and the orchid room, which contains more than a thousand different orchid plants. Mm -hmm. 
The conservatory also has many plant-based displays that highlight some of the sites that you'll see on the Biltmore Estate and in the surrounding area. Now, I'm not afraid to admit that even as a man, I enjoy the orchid room the best. It's filled with so many different beautiful orchids. It's amazing how well they take care of them. To look at these orchids up close really shows you just how amazing our God is. Not even Frederick Law Olmsted could design something this amazing. I always try to get Brianna to pose next to the purple orchids, but she's a little bit shy with pictures. Along with a big variety of tropical plants such as the 40 foot tall palm trees, you'll also find an orange tree and keep an eye out for the banana tree. And if you keep your eyes peeled, you'll find their pineapple too. The nice thing about the conservatory is that no matter what time of year you come, there's always going to be something neat to see. As you drive away from the conservatory and the walled garden and take the road that leads you to Antler Hill Village, you'll notice many different beautiful azaleas lining the road. There's also an azalea garden that you can park and get out and walk through. Now this time of year, we were just a little bit short of the peak season for the azaleas, but they still were beautiful to look at. Azaleas are native to this area, and you can find them most anywhere, but Biltmore has about the best selection. Other trees that are beautiful in the spring are the redbud tree, which are very common in this area, and Japanese maples, like you see here. Once you get past all of the gardens, you'll come to the bass pond where you cannot fish for bass or any other type of fish. There are several places you can pull over and park to take a view or even walk around the pond. Yeah, so I wonder how long I would lose my yearly pass for if I got caught fishing here. I mean, is it worth it? Probably not but it's still a beautiful pond to look at. Once you reach the dam of the bass pond, you can park alongside the road and take a walk out across the trail that takes you across the dam, and then you can explore the back side of the bass pond or go down below and explore the area around the waterfall below the dam. And when the weather gets hot, if you bring your kids, or your dog, or your pet duck, they'll love to play in the water below the dam. <coughs> Along the road that takes you back to Antler Hill Village, 
and towards the exit, you'll see a large body of water that's called the lagoon. The Biltmore State has an Orvis endorsed fly fishing school and you can pay to go on a guided tour on this lagoon where you can do fly fishing for yourself. Fishing without a guide here is also prohibited and I still haven't figured out a way to get around that. Running just along the other side of this vehicle path is the French Broad River which cuts through the Biltmore State property. You can pay to raft or kayak down the river from access points on the estate. On the other side of the lagoon, there's a perfect place to stop and take one last picture of the Biltmore State from the back side. And when the water is nice and calm, you can get a reflection of the house in the water and it makes a beautiful picture. So thanks for joining us today as we went through Biltmore to see Biltmore Blooms. I need to get a video of that. They're trying to make this turkey. Why do you say that? Because she's a girl and they're boys. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> They're not gonna let that lady pass, are they? <laughs> well, the turkey's kind of sidetracked our ending, but just make sure and plan a trip to the Biltmore State next spring so that you can see all the tulips and everything else that's in bloom at the Biltmore. Make sure to like and subscribe and keep an eye out for more adventures from the Biltmore State coming this summer. See you next time.